The 5 liter Coyote is arguably Ford's best engine they ever made, and these engines can effortlessly make, when modified, 800, 900, even 1000 horsepower. More importantly, how are these engines able to accomplish this? Well, we have to look back in some history real quick. In the 90s to early 2000s, Ford reserved high-tech dual overhead cam engines for their top trim Mustangs like the SVT Cobra. The lesser trim GT received the single overhead cam 4.6, while decent wasn't really a powerhouse. In 2005, the three-valve Mustang three-valve per cylinder was a step in the right direction, but since the Camaro discontinued, there was really no competition and power bumps weren't really necessary. Now in 2009, however, competition started to heat up with the release of the fifth-gen Camaro and the SRTA Challenger forcing Ford to give the GT trim a boost. So Ford answered with the 2011 Mustang GT powered by a 5 liter dual overhead cam V8 making 412 naturally aspirated horsepower. This was the start of one of the most legendary tuning platforms and loudest cold starts on God's green earth. So there's five things you need to know why Coyotes make such crazy horsepower for their size. For starters, Coyote engines are very efficient, but not in the way of miles per gallon, but rather volumetric efficiency. For example, if an engine is five liters in displacement, it should consume five liters of air on the intake cycle. Now, in actuality, different engine configurations are gonna consume either less or more. Pushrod engines like the LS, typically in stock form, do 88 to 90% volumetric efficiency. Now with the Coyote, the Coyote does over 100% volumetric efficiency because it's dual overhead cam and it can get the air into the cylinders much more efficiently. Next thing is Coyotes don't need a lot of effort to really make these cars fast. All they need is boost and fuel. For example, with an LS, if you want to reach those 800, 900 thousand horsepower goal, you're going to need boost and you're going to need to swap out the valve train and the camshaft. Now, personally, I think this is the funnest part about having an LS is because you get to learn how the engine works as you're building it. But if you want easy mode, a Coyote is as easy as boost, injectors, a fuel system, and uh, possibly oil pump gears. But simply put, you're not going to be as physically invested inside of a Coyote than you will be inside of an LS. Some people think that's a negative. Some people think that's positive. Next thing is, is really not hard to get your hands on a coyote they came in three different generations across mustangs and f-150s so from 2011 all the way until present day there are coyote engines that have proliferated the market because of this there's a lot of different options you can build your coyote with and uh it doesn't always have to be aftermarket parts for example if you have an old school let's say fox body or even you want to rejuvenate your 2011 to 14 mustang you can do something like a 321 build this is where you you take a gen 3 2018 and up coyote short block you pit gen 2 heads on top which flow much better than the gen 1 heads but at the same time aren't gen 3 heads with the direct injection where you need the newer computers and also you pit gen 1 valve train so you have the gen 1 cams and timing system where you can swap this into vehicles with the older gen 1 pcms and really coyotes are just legos at this point i mean you can pit multiple generations together they all fit together and then you have a cost effective but still stout engine build. Next, coyotes love boost. I mean, really love boost. The reason these coyotes like boost is because they naturally like to eat air. If you look at factory cast coyote heads, they flow 290 to 300 CFM. For comparison, stock Hellcats make right around 12 pounds of boost, and from the factory rated 717 horsepower at the crank, usually see right around 600, 620, 630 to the wheels. Now, since the Coyote is much more efficient, on that same boost pressure, you're gonna see much more than 600, 620 wheel horsepower with a Coyote. You're probably gonna see near 650, sometimes in some cases 700 wheel horsepower, which is, that's, that's making some steam, that's making some power. Now these engines are still mortal. They're not built engines from the factory. So they're gonna tap out after a certain point and they're really gonna just throw reliability out the window. With Gen 1 Coyotes, you'll typically see that after the 650 wheel horsepower mark. With Gen 2 engines and Gen 3 engines with those forged connecting rods, you'll typically see 800 wheel horsepower before. After that, you're not looking at reliability. You're purely just looking at to run a good number at the track or just to make a very, very good dyno number. And last but not least, a common thing that's overlooked when when it comes to coyote engines are their ability to push rpm out of the box
Well, you may be asking yourself, why is RPM so important? Well, there's a factor when it comes into the horsepower that you can get out of an engine. For example, horsepower equals torque times RPM divided by 5252. If you ever look closely on a dyno graph, you'll see at 5252 RPM, torque and horsepower are exactly the same. So whenever the RPM is 5252, it's gonna cancel out and horsepower is gonna equal torque. So there's ways of increasing horsepower. Either you increase the torque or you increase the RPM. Now increasing the torque is gonna be ways by increasing the compression ratio, um, larger displacement, making more power out of the engine. Or the other way is increasing the RPM. And remember we talked about before how the Coyote heads flow very, very well. This is going to add that effect where even though you're pushing higher RPM, the power isn't falling off. A lot of times with older pushrod engines, LSs, even LTs, you'll see past 6,000, 6,500 RPM, they fall completely on their face. While Coyotes, they'll keep on trucking to 7,000, 7,200, 7,500. Now, yes, you can do this with an LS or LT, especially spin those things up that high if you got an aftermarket cam and some valve springs. But the cool thing about the Coyote is you can do this out of the box. This is kind of the main recurring issue with Coyotes is that a lot of things you can do with these that you can't do with LSs out of the box. So at the end of the day, the Coyote is a force to be reckoned with, especially in the aftermarket world. Now I know the, there's gonna be LS guys and Hemi guys that are gonna rip me apart in the comments saying, oh, we can do this, we do this cheaper, cool. But it, it's still, you still need to acknowledge how good a Coyote does for its relative small displacement. Yes, the size is large because it's dual overhead cam and it's as big as a big block, I understand. I know, where, I know everything you guys are gonna say in the comments, but <laughs> at the end of the day, the Coyote is a force to be reckoned with. You guys have any other ideas of engines you want me to review and go over? Put it in the comments below. It's 337 speed.